Hello everyone, welcome back to Pitola Innovations and if you are new here, a warm welcome to you as well. Before we introduce what we are doing today, I have something important to tell you at the end of this video. It's an update to one of the tips and tricks I shared in my last video. So make sure you watch this video to the very end to be able to learn the new technique. Now, have you ever wondered how to make objects appear as if they are floating effortlessly, sitting perfectly or even bending convincingly? Well, you are in luck. In this video, I will show you three popular shadow techniques that will take your designs to the next level. We will start by learning how to create these shadows from scratch right within Pixel Lab. But wait, there is more. I have also prepared the refined shadow PNG files for the floating, sitting and bent objects even with a bonus. You can simply download them and easily import them into your designs. No need to start from scratch every time. And I will show you how to use the PNG files. So. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you will not miss any of my tutorials. And if you learn anything from this video, no matter how small, hit the like button and let me know about it in the comments. Without any further ado, let's get started. So this is our object, this is our PNG object. And as you can see, it's looking so boring. So very boring. So let's start by creating a floating object. And I think that's very, very simple. That's why I need to start with that one. So what you need to do is to place your object. You can be working with any object actually. I'm just using this uh, for the sake of this tutorial. So just go to where you create your shape. This third guy here. So click on it. You have to click out. Make sure you are not clicking the object so that you're able to see the new shapes here. So click out the canvas, then go to this third guy here, then go to where you create your shapes. So click on it, then you have to change the shape from square to circle. So click on this guy, then you will see circle here. So you can click on it. Then we don't need the fill color. So let's reduce the opacity to zero because we don't need the fill color. So then go to where you manage your stroke. This is where you manage your stroke. This is for fill and this is for stroke. So make sure you are on stroke. Then increase the stroke all the way up like this. The old 37, give it the old 37. You can leave the color at black. If it's not on black, you can make sure you put it on black. Then the next thing you want to do is to click on this anchor point to scale it all the way down till you start seeing only the black. Can you see? I'm seeing white here in the middle of the circle, but you have to make sure you move it down till you start seeing only the black. Then the next thing you want to do is to go back to the stroke. Make sure you don't click OK before you go back to the stroke. Then you increase the blur radius all the way up. The old 25, give it the old 25. Then the next thing you want to do is to click OK. Then you have something like this. So it's still not looking real. But what you want to do now is to scale it down a bit. Adjust it according to your object. According to your object. Note that just because I'm scaling it down, doesn't mean you have to scale your own down to so depending on your object. So we have something like this. Then the next thing we want to do is to go to opacity. Let's go to opacity and reduce the opacity like this. Let's give it something like 30 or 31. Depending on your object and whatever it is you are working on. So as you can see, our object is now floating. Can you see it is easy? Our object is floating effortlessly. So the next thing we want to create we can make, make use of this shadow we created as well to make it sit conveniently. So what do we do? So what we are going to do is to move this one up and scale it like this. We have to make it slimmer. So make it slimmer, then go to opacity. Increase the opacity all the way up a bit like this. You can give it 50 or 52 depending on what you are working on then you have to make sure you set it so that it doesn't look uh unprofessional so you have something like this so depending on your object you can decide to go to where you manage your layer and bring the shadow down like this but for my object it doesn't work you can test with your object to see what works for you but for my object i think i prefer it up than to be down so according to you know let's see it together i think i prefer it to be up depending on what you are working on so i prefer it to be up than down so and as you can see it is sitting conveniently you can see if i turn off this 
you can see it is just there but if i put it there it is sitting conveniently and it is more better like this so the next one we want to create is the bent shadow and that's the tricky part so let me undo this so that we can make use of the first shadow we created this first shadow we created now let me off this and show you something now if you want to create a bent shadow for a bent object you have to make sure the object is bending or if the object is not bending you have to bend it yourself click on the object and click on this guy here this anchor point to rotate it i'm not talking about this one if you are clicking on this one that means you want to scale it up and down but if you click on this one you'll be able to rotate it either left or right like this so let's rotate it so as we have rotated it no shadow to show that this thing is actually rotating and standing you know it can be rotating and you know be floating and it can be rotating and be standing so we want to make sure it is standing so let me bring back the shadow we created this is the shadow we created so let me increase it like this a bit so what you want to do now is to go to your perspective tool so the magic will happen in the perspective too so go to your perspective this is it you have to make sure you click on the shadow and go to the third guy to be able to go to perspective tool click on it then enable it by the time you enable it you have these things here so let's start by these guys here these two guys move this one down a bit and move this one up a bit but about this guy make sure you don't go all the way up because if you go all the way up all your shadow will vanish so make sure you use them sparingly they should be close but not too close so that you have something like this so make sure you take your time that's why I'm showing you two methods that you can create it yourself and you can create it automatically with the refined PNG I've provided in the description box. So once you have it like this, you can choose to you know, increase this one like this to make it more you know, realistic. So once you are done with this, you can just click OK like this. So then you bring this guy like this to where your object is touching down like this. So you can click on it and make it more slimmer like this and bring it here. So make sure it is touching it. So you can experiment by going to layer and bring it down like this and set it under your object. You can make use of the position as well the position to to move it to make sure it is looking more realistic then once you are done you can click on it then go to opacity if you think it's too deep so reduce the opacity the way you want it i will reduce mine like this as you are reducing it make sure you are checking your object to see if it's okay or not depending on what you are working on so as you can see we have created a realistic bent shadow can you see our object is bending and it is more realistic if i turn it off if i turn it off you can see it looks boring but by the time i turn it on you can see the difference so now the next thing i want to show you is how you can create it automatically with the refined shadow i've created for you you can download it in the description box i dropped the link in the description box below you can download it from there now let me show you how you can use it now just go to import you import it as your normal image it is png and the shadow so just import it so this is the first one i created for the floating shadow it is very easy so you can just import it you can crop it if you want to crop it click ok then you bring it down like this can you see it is more refined than the than the first one we created right so you can see our object is floating so let me add this and import the other ones to see how it works so this is another one where i created two shadows for sitting in case you are working with another object this is the first one let me click ok and bring it here so make sure the point make sure the point is touching where your object started so take your time to set it so you can either leave it like this 
or go to uh, where you manage your layers and bring it behind your object depending on what works for you so let me quickly show you the uh but the other one a bonus that i created for you there's a particular one i created for you it is very fine it is stylish i named it stylish if you check the folder i dropped there let me import it this is the stylish so now just import it like this then take it to your object like this make sure it starts from this place but this one it is essential you take it back like you move it back so go to where you manage your layers and bring it behind the object can you see can you see it's looking stylish so it's actually better than the sitting one so then the last one let me up this yeah then let me bring the last one so the last one is the bent one so you can click ok then bend your object like this then bring it here like this then you have something like this you can choose to reduce the opacity as well or you can leave it the way it is depending on whatever it is you are working on so can you see it's looking so great in my last video i shared a trick for dealing with the issue of script or decorative fonts getting cut off by pixel app i discovered that adding two extra spaces in front of the text could fix that problem and show off the fonts full beauty but guess what one of my amazing viewers along with another helpful commenter suggested an even better method so let's quickly write something so let's write let's write drink let me increase it let me increase it like this and change the font to a script font i want to choose biloxi script then we have something like this but as we can see pixel app has cut off the uh some part of this font so, but in my last video i showed you that you can just add two extra spaces but instead of adding two extra spaces you can just go to to padding to where you increase or decrease your padding this is it by the time you click on the text you go to padding this is padding so go, going to padding we have left padding and we have right padding this is the right padding and this is the left padding so increasing the left padding shows whatever it is that has cut off and increasing the right padding shows whatever it is that has been cut off at the right part of the text so now thanks to these amazing persons that suggested this new method i really appreciate you guys that's it guys if you want to stay updated with the latest smartphone graphic design tips and tricks i invite you to subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell to be notified whenever i upload a new video keep nurturing your creativity and let's continue this artistic journey together until next time stay creative